Welcome back to Paul Barn Garage for part two of the three-in-one van extravaganza adventure 4000. Where we're going to start today is where we left off last time. We need to put the transmission in this thing as well as transfer case, buttoning up all kinds of stuff under the hood here. And as well, we got to get a steering column to work. But hopefully by the end of this video, we'll have a running, driving, four-wheel drive, one-ton shorty van. Let's dig in. All right, JD. Go ahead and pick up that transmission. Let's put it on that transmission jack. Oh, God. Oh, come on. It's just a turbo 350. Uh, yeah. uh, the key is to lift with your lower back. <laughs> you gotta put the torque converter in it. Jay from Irish Outlaw Garage had his guy rebuild this for me. So check out Jay. He's one of the vital cogs in the pull barn operation. Give me a minute here. I'm having a hell of a time putting this torque converter in. Don't ever do this, but sometimes the splines on a reman are just not quite right, you know. And you just hit it with a rubber mallet. If you're pretty sure it's lined up, just kind of tap on it around the edge. Don't hit it hard, just enough. And that got us the rest of the way in here. You know it's installed, but you can't get your fingers behind it. Allow us to secure this for safety. Also, the transmission pan of this thing seems to be full of ice. We'll bolt it in and, and then we'll drop it and take a look, you know. <laughs> I can actually like sit up in here. I know, it is pretty nice. What if that... Oh. <laughs> I was just about to say, what if that transmission jacked his brakes one day? Oh, it's never going to do that. It's from Harbor Freight. Wait, no. That's not going to work. That's not a problem I saw coming. What? Maybe we need to lift the front of that yeah. block up a little bit. Yeah, just leaning forward. Yeah, you can see it's leaning forward pretty good. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just throw a jack under the snout. And mm -hmm. Maybe everything will just kind of self-level itself out. No. It's broken. That looks more like it yeah. should sit in there. Not quite there. I think it's... Well, this is convenient. I guess this is the one pro about a van, huh? Well, that's about the easiest transmission I think I ever put in anything, Jay. That's pretty easy. <laughs> uh, trying to get the dipstick installed. JD's guiding it. Is that doing anything? It's it's in like the hole there that it's pushed in. This dipstick is really far away from the belt housing for some reason. We're gonna, we're gonna fix that. I have a half inch socket here and this starter bolt goes in it quite nicely. Uh, so we could put it on like this, but I'm afraid that's gonna get in the way of the doghouse. We might wanna lean it over as much as we can, you know what I mean? I've decided to abandon the socket spacer method and go with the four random nuts I found on a light fixture method. It's a little known method, but you know, it, uh, it's accepted by the AFC. Beautiful, like a rock. So here's our transfer case. When I pulled it out, I couldn't get these bolts out of these bushings. Not knowing what kind of bushing I need to buy, I decided to just chop the crossmember into two chunks like this. So I figured it'd be easier just to re-weld this back together. Now obviously, I don't think we can just butt weld that together. We'll put this piece of channel in there on either side of it, weld that in, and that'll be strong enough. I managed to rip up the side of this to try to cut the sides off. We can get a flat piece out of this piece of C channel here, you know, because that's just the kind of high class operation I run. I'm gonna clean this up so I can weld it. I uh, threw a quick, couple quick tacks on there while JD held it. And now, I shall weld a plate on the side to secure it further. And then we're just going to kind of box this whole thing. You're going to love what I have in store for you. Behold, it's attached. Missing a little reinforcement on the top of that, of course. So, uh, I finally have discovered a use for the metric system. Uh, I got these metric wrenches that are completely useless. I mean, they don't even go to anything. What the hell is a 19? Yeah, something like that, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking they'd be good for. You gotta put this into the SAE modification bench. Oh, that is 
nearly perfection. Oh, that's it right there. Yep, right there. That's it. Okay, let me cut off the other end of this uh, full and complete the modification. You can step across it. You can weld it. Look at that. You don't like you see what I'm doing, Jay? Yep. It's perfect. You'll notice I didn't have any nuts, so I just welded the bolts in. It's fine. I don't know what kind of transfer case this thing is, but it seems to be made out of a billet of like obsidian or something. It is so heavy. Me and JD managed to get on the transmission jack with the with some brute force. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, that's part of the battle. Now we just have to get it up. Oh, the adapter thing. This is the adapter he uses to spline the transmission to whatever the hell this transfer case is. Figured it'd probably be easiest to put it on like yeah. that. Oh boy, I forgot about this. Oh. You think it's gonna hit? Can we put that in with the cross member attached? No, I, I can't go up. It won't make the transmission. That might help. If we could put this in the transfer case instead. Yeah, that, that might help. do it. Well, we're, we're getting somewhere. God, it's so close. Man. We put them all backwards. Wait, what? Look. No. This needs to be further forward. So here's what we'll do. It has these other bushings up here, which are trashed. We'll just take this side out and put it over there. This side and put it over here. That should work, right? Yeah. I can't believe it, but we actually got that bolt out and saved the bushing at that. And now, we can just do that, right? Yeah. We flipped those around. Now it should be oriented correctly, assuming these brackets are the same and not completely homemade garbage. So just go ahead and go up? Yeah. Go. Once you get up there, you're going to have to go back, yeah. obviously. This cross member is going to have to go. Yep. That sucks. I have come up with a genius plan. Rather than try to extract the impossible bolts out of this thing, it's not ever going to happen. I'm going to cut this cross member out. We're going to lift. That will give us all the room we need to put this on, bolt it to the transmission. We can get the front bolt into this cross member. And then we will just simply put it back. It'll be that easy. I really didn't want to do this. The only way this thing's going in is if we cut out this brace here, this cross member, and that's going to allow us to slide this up on there. Ah, that is one very well cut piece of metal. Now we have the room to get splined onto the transmission. I could have cut all the spot welds out of this and then pulled it out. That would have taken forever. It's actually so cold outside that my cordless batteries aren't working. So we're stuck with corded stuff. And I don't actually have a corded drill. My friend John is here from Mad Scientist Garage. And uh, you guys know I've been fighting the hell out of this transfer case. So we're going to blame him uh, <laughs> for what's going to happen here. Uh, God, it sickens me. It won't fit. It hits the floor. There's something different about these vans. and I really screwed up, and I just got to own that. And, uh... <laughs> I hate this. I hate it. I like you're doing anything. Uh, you're making noise. Yeah, definitely doing that. Okay, so we were just test fitting with the beading that I provided to the bottom of this floor. And it fits now. Uh, and it lowered the transmission, which is, that's always good. We fixed it. It doesn't matter how. <laughs> it's, it's good to go now. It's splined on there and everything. The drive shaft might even go on. We still gotta get bolts in and stuff, but I just wasn't expecting this to actually work. So, yeah. When I lifted this up, my head was under here. Oh, well, that's all right. It's cool. Shake hands with danger. Look at that. It even has a bolt in it. I never saw that coming. I don't know how the hell we're going to actually attach this to the frame or chassis of the vehicle at all. But that seems like a later problem, like in about 10 minutes. Cross-threading with nature's lock type. Here's what we gotta do now. Uh, we're gonna have to drill holes through the floor, through here, this bushing, through the floor, that way we can bolt in the ears, because we don't have room. But I figure if we sandwich it through the floor, 
it'll be stronger it will just hard mount this whole thing in here and that's going to be better than those bushings they used anyway perfection are you in charge of boogering no you can booger just as well as i can i imagine i suppose um i'm gonna tack the back and then i'll bend it up so it's touching the front mount this is gonna be uh not good no, just weld it straight to the van that one definitely went in my sleeve well jd uh we're just gonna go ahead and have you weld in uh, that side of the cross member on the driver's side okay okay and john's tacking it right now but you finished the job right. you know you're probably as good as anybody i am going to install our new street demon carb i really like these things this is from holly and it has the goggle valve. See, it looks like aviators back here. And that makes it cool. This one's a 750, and uh, this 454 should be very happy with that. Yeah. Well, JD's down there welding away. John's gonna put the drive shafts in. I'm gonna rig up some throttle linkage. And we're, we're just going to combine forces and try to make this more of a van than it was. These two weren't even lining up, so JD just hammered <laughs> on it and just bridged the gap. Nice. Yeah. Put the cross member right back on. <laughs> Pretty good. So JD's put the drive shaft in here? Yeah, he did oh, the whole thing. Excellent. Yeah. Good work. Work faster. I've been supervising him the whole time, and he's just not getting my work done. But that's ridiculous. I know. Kids these days don't want to work. They don't. I'm yelling at him the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to get this thing on top dead center, get that distributor installed, wire it, then we'll hook everything up here, put a starter on this thing, and maybe at least we can make this thing go vroom. That would be cool. Yeah, sure. That's going to happen. Put your finger in the hole. Oh, I get to finger your big block. Nothing yet. Yep. That's it? I felt a puff of air. Okay, is Do we it, have a timing mark? Is there a line? I don't see one. Oh, good. Well, maybe it's on this one. Yeah. You know, being a van, it has two timing marks. Yeah, some butthole, like, tractor painted this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Good work, John. Yep, that's well, because it stopped farting. Yep. Yeah, turn the oil pump drive shaft a little bit. This where I would like it. Just gonna peek down in here. This is convenient in a van, really. See the oil pump drive shaft is pointing straight ahead. We're just gonna turn it counterclockwise, just a smidge. Try to get our rotor pointing about right there. Just stick this broken off Harbor Freight screwdriver in there blindly and drop it into the engine. Completely destroy it. Perfect. Let's see what that does. Now if we make this our number one. Our rotor is pointing just ahead of that at this position. Should be, I don't know, 15 degrees of timing or so-ish. And that will work perfectly. So let's wire this thing with some Mallory wires I got on clearance from Holly for like 15 bucks. And that'll be perfect. We have a slight problem with a U-joint strap here. You know, clean those threads up with, uh, with that. You getting that front drive shaft in, Jay? Yep. Right on. Rear drive shaft is in. Looking good. So you're gonna try to weld my fucked up steering shaft back together. For off-road use only. Yeah, definitely. Have you actually managed to get steering linkage on this? Yeah. What? Yeah, I mean, it's it's sketchily welded with 110 AC. But it'll, <laughs> it'll, uh, and a hammer. It's got probably about six inches of engagement, I'm gonna say. It's I, cold out. <laughs> <laughs> it'll engage more when it warms up. Let's make sure it works. <laughs> Grab the wheel. See yeah, when we see if it turns. Is it working? Yeah, yes. It's working. It turns the front wheels and it doesn't bind. My dude. <laughs> the column. I need to finish bolting the column in, but it is working. That's so sketchy. <laughs> oh my god, that is. I mean, that is how you die, right there, ladies and gentlemen. Look how much slop. Look at this. Look at the steering wheel. I've just been waiting. It's been really cold and snowy. And all the deliveries are all delayed. I have another sector coming. That you didn't cut in half? 
Right. I'm so happy that worked though. I mean, at least proof of concept is here. And that's that's actually really nice. And that's for the insurance claim later? Yeah. <laughs> or the potential lawsuit. Whichever comes first. Potential law I was told this was for off-road use only. JDE is trying to hook up some brake lines. You got the quarter inch one there. So just pair it to the quarter inch yeah. line there. And then we'll just, you know, tie everything up with zip ties and it'll be fine. And then you'll need that 3 16 line that you have there. And then just tie it over to here. And then we'll, we'll maybe put brakes on it. For a shifter, that's kind of an issue. Because I had to move the column back. We can't use the column shift. Well, easily. So what John's doing is cutting right here. And we will take this shaft here. And we're going to put a floor shift right next to the driver. So you You know, like that. Just that easy. John's working on a shifter. I gotta make some kind of plug out of these oil cooler adapters, and obviously all the parts stores are closed, it's dark out. So, what I'm gonna do is just fill those with JB Weld and then drive these bolts into them. A little bit of that, and a little bit of that. Mix very well. Then we put a bolt in. Yes, see that? Yes. Thread the bolt in. Like this. And there we go. <laughs> Two brilliantly homemade pipe plugs. You don't need to go to the hardware store. John's brilliant shifter set up here. Piece of rod here. Boom. Safe. Really safe. <laughs> don't park on any hills. JD's putting in a clicky clack, which we need because this 454 has no fuel pump provision. So he's going back. Always mount clicky clacks uh, as close to the fuel tank as you can. It's going to help them out. They're really better at pushing than pulling. Disconnected the fuel hose out of the tank, yep. right? Yeah. And uh, he's going to put it right in between there? Yep. Got them. Right. Cool. I'll get you a screwdriver and some hose. So now we're going to try to figure out how to put a 4x4 shifter in this because it's a four wheel drive van. So here's the Pathfinder shifter. Uh, yeah, we're just going to have to hack a hole next to that other giant hole and then just stick it in there and, and it's going to work fine. This is made of iron oxide. I'm just going to plug weld it to the floor Good is idea. what I'm going to do. The floor the floor is rust free. We're going to add rust to it in order to make it a vintage van. There wasn't enough rust in this van, so it had to come from somewhere. Yeah, the you know, life didn't make holes in it, so now I am. We have a shifter. It works. Let's get the torque converter bolted up. There. Torque converter bolts. That uh, touches the case of the transmission a little bit. I'm sure that's fine. Uh, it'll wear through. It'll be fine. So you notice I got uh, tractor paint all over the starting mounting surface here. Uh, don't do that. Uh, take a wire wheel to it. Clean it up first. Yeah, I lost the Vortex starter, the mini starter, that would have been a lot better to put on here. I don't know what happened to it. It's gone. Put this big heaping hunk of crap on here. That is convenient though, because all small block Chevy and big block Chevy starters are the same thing. Well, I'm gonna get this slapped on here. That's probably gonna be it for tonight. Tomorrow we'll come back out, try to get a cooling system, maybe even get some brakes. Well, we've just been piddling away on some stuff here. JD ran all the wiring for the fuel pump uh, to a toggle switch, right? Yep. What'd you do with it? Where'd you put the toggle? Uh, it's just hanging, but there's nothing there to put it on. Here. Oh, that's beautiful. That uh, ran transmission lines. Uh, still obviously got to put a radiator in it and transmission cooler and stuff. Good morning. Well, afternoon? I don't know. We're going to try to wrap some more up on this thing. Maybe we can make it run and move. That's the goal. John's got to leave in a couple hours. We're going to try to go as far as we can. We're going to start with uh, my magnificent pipe plugs. Uh, JB Weld and the bolt worked beautifully. They are cured to perfection. So we just slam those bad boys in there, and uh, that saved me like eight bucks, you know. Fuel line hooked up. I had to run it under the cross member to get it away from the freaking exhaust manifolds. Very tight in there. Here's a tip. If you don't want to bubble flare something, you know, like a line or something that you cut, just use two hose clamps, and make sure you face them opposite directions. It'll pinch that hose down both ways. It'll be fine. I'm going to use a metal Wix filter in here, because I don't trust the underhood environment of a van that much to use a plastic one. Remember when we saw some ice in the pan earlier? We're gonna drop it just to make sure it's maybe not that. Yep. Oh. It got water and it's sitting around. Okay. 
Well, that's not the end of the world, though. We caught it. Interesting looking combination there. But I don't think it's going to hurt anything. We just got to get it off of there. That is a big block radiator out of the big blue church van. And uh, that's a big empty hole. <sighs> yeah, something like that. I mean, that, that'll do it. That is actually perfect. It fits very well up there. This random Chinese electric fan that I've had laying around forever. And, uh,. Right there looks pretty good. So we have to make a lower radio hose because nobody stocks it. We're using one of those hose adapter things, you know, like a repair kit thing. They're pretty handy for just sticking things together. And there we go. That gives us the S that we need in that. We should be good to put the big block radiator in, which the small block radiator would have fit in here a lot better. But I think the big block radiator is probably a necessity. Looks like this is thawed out very nicely. You know, that's just one of those things that happens. It's very normal for that to happen. Uh, the transmission will ice up. You know, hate it. We'll give this a good cleaning. I don't think it ever got up to the level of the valve body. I think it's probably fine, but it's a good thing we took a look at it for sure. There we go. Like new. Nice. Yeah, it's black, but it's clean. Never, uh, never actually like changed the oil or looked at anything on this engine. Just kind of said, yeah, it'll be totally fine. Change the oil, fill that up. Uh, we've got to fill the transfer case, got to fill the transmission, fill the radiator. Hands are so nice, you can just change the oil from the passenger seat. It's easy. You don't even have to pull over. I professionally attached our transmission cooler here. Mm -hmm. You see that, JD? Mm -hmm. It's done that way on purpose. Do you know the reason? So the transmission fluid can go down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. easier. Also, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes, the finest antifreeze you can get for $9 a gallon at the farm store. You are not leaking. Not leaking? Yep. Good. Good. I hear a door buzzer. So this battery must have some juice in it. That's a plus. Check out my custom battery cables. These are nice. Very, very good. Top notch. Uh, let's see if it cranks. Yeah. Your fuel pump works great. There we go. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. All right. We got vacuum leaks everywhere, but let's just see what happens. It'll be fine. Oh, it's uh, pouring. What is pouring? The gas. Turn it off. Was Jeez. it loose? Yeah. I think we forgot to tighten that one. Remember we moved it? Uh-huh. I don't know why. It was only like four in the morning. Can I um, have some light? No. <laughs> no. Let's try it. fire. Everything looks good, no leaks or anything. It's convenient that I could just time it right here. Kind of nice. Yeah, baby, a little more. right next to the thing that was leaking to uh -huh. see if it'll spray. Is it pouring? No. No? Good, we're good then. All right, start up. Fixed. <laughs> uh, I think it'll move. Let's see what it does. This is the moment of truth. Breathe. 
Oh, I tried taking my head out the window, but that didn't work. Boy, when I was your age, we didn't even have oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So apparently it needs exhaust, but all that oil. I don't know what that is. It doesn't matter. Is there a missing plug on your case? On the what? Transfer case? No, it wouldn't be no, that. It's up here. It's this. Oh. It's, it's getting all churned up. <laughs> That's why it's all spread out like that. Yeah. We couldn't have bothered, you know, taking that out. Little did we know that this would be a major mistake. So the best I'd come up with is open the door on the side. I could put the doghouse cover on it. Why don't we do that? Yeah, do that. It's right here. Got the doghouse put on. Yeah, that ought to help some. Maybe. Prevent you from, you know, dying. That was <laughs> so bad. It starts right up, too. Oh no! Uh oh! Ooh! You good? Oh no! Yeah. Uh, oh you! Oh no! You well, ran over I that. Have bad news. Oh. <laughs> oh no! Damn it! Uh, so apparently it only has forward. Well, it goes forward really well. <laughs> uh. Uh. Dang it. Uh. Oh. Well, it was really nice hanging out with you guys. Uh. <laughs> it moves. <laughs> So the, the transfer case was in neutral, and I shoved it forward, and the shifter doesn't do anything. Which position was the shifter in? All the way forward. It's backwards. No! Oh! So it was in low. Yeah. Wait, no. let me just fix this real quick. Yeah, the shifter doesn't uh, work. That is shocking. I can't believe it. Well, unless it is right and the doghouse no longer allows it. Uh -oh. oh no, because it would have gone backwards when yeah. I shoved it forward and it didn't do anything. You may need some, uh, some oil dry. Oh, JD, you're cleaning up the Exxon Valdez over here. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, hindsight. That wasn't the best spot to put that. Yeah. Okay. Thankfully, I put it there. I did that. No, I put that there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, John. <laughs> Thanks for helping me drive my van through a wall. You're welcome. That shifter works really great as long as you're only going forwards. No, it goes forward real good. Uh, I think uh, you know, he's got a split. I'm going to keep working on it so the video's not over. i got to get brakes and or park. I mean, we could have either one, but I think just having one brake to hold it like so I can feel what reverse is and drive is because it just kind of falls into... We got we got to figure something better out. It's kind of it's kind of where I'm getting at here. Uh, it's not the best <laughs> solution. You should have just kept going. Yeah. We could have extended the the building. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, thanks for all your help, though. Of course, couldn't have got it this far by myself. That's for sure. Check out Mad Scientist Garage YouTube. He's got some stuff, but he's on Instagram and all that crap too. I've returned today. I'm going to try to get some brakes on this thing. You know, so it doesn't drive through the wall again. That would be ideal. You know, of all the problems I kind of foresaw happening with this project, that never crossed my mind. Oh, well, I got a bunch of stuff for it. Let's get started. Let's zip off the front wheels. It's actually the first time I think I've ever even taken them off. Oh yeah, those rotors look fine. Definitely not gonna replace those. about right for my luck today. My car's in a ditch about three quarters of a mile up the road. I tried to leave for work this morning. Couldn't make it down the road so I turned around tried to get back home and uh, yeah put it in a ditch. So I had to walk home at 5 30 in the morning in an ice storm. It was, it was wonderful. I got these brake hoses and they're for the earlier model van and that's the difference being they had this threaded section that would thread I think it went under the frame rail. I believe these are a little bit longer than these later model vans. I'm kind of, you know, spitting in the wind here to see if I come up with anything. Let's get our new caliper put on and let me resurface these rotors real quick. Just... Okay, those are done now. And the wheel bearing, oh, it's perfect. Now these brake hoses only go on one way, but you can save yourself a little bit of a neck ache, you know, if you load them first. But they're, they're a square and they lock into the caliper. Very nice. I like these uh, Power Stop Evolution pads. They're ceramic and they're cheap. 
on Rock Auto. Mostly I like them because they're cheap. These are a bit of a tight fit. I don't know why. I'm sure that won't be a problem later. Well, the brake hose runs right into the steering knuckle. Can't have that, so let's make a slight alteration. <laughs> you can trust me, I'm on the internet. There we go. And it is a bit longer. I think we moved that hard line up here. We'll, we'll have enough. It's my plan of utter brilliance. So there is enough room here. If we kind of mount this like that, you know. Uh, actually, inside, you know, but for reference. Here, this is an apron. Uh, I had to move the bracket off the frame. So if we just move this bracket inside here, we'll have plenty of travel in our hose. No problem. Uh, there we go. Solidly mounted. And we got some flex. Maybe too much, actually. I ought to cut that off, but I'll forget about it, and we'll deal with that some other day. Well, I ought to do that other break, but I've, I kind of forgot that we need to put front shocks on the thing. So let's do that while, while, I'm, while I'm right here. Here's what I bought for shocks. Uh, the cheapest rough country generic shock I could buy. Uh, and I think they'll fit in there, no problem. I just had to shave them a little bit to fit. No big deal. Come on now. Oh yeah, these are compressed way too much. They're not going to work very good at all. Oh well. Oh, this one. This one's a little special here. See, we're going to be able to shoot a self-tapper into this one. You'll note that I just easily shot a tech screw through the frame rail of this vehicle. This axle is attached to that. Just, just keep that in mind. Just got to trim them a little on the lathe. Yeah, that's, that's precision there. You don't get this on just any YouTube channel. Well, let's change this master cylinder. I don't know if we really need to, but it's probably not a bad idea. I don't know if there's any difference between a half ton master and a one ton. Oh, there might be. We'll see. Let's look right here. That is a Ooh. lot different. Yeah. That piston's way bigger. All right, well, let's just put this back on there. Yeah. Uh, I'll clean it out with some brake clean, though. <laughs> we'll rebuild this since I bought the wrong one. I mean, it did work, at least. At least we knew, I'm like, we know that it did function. Okay, I gotta get these back wheels off. Like I said, I've never pulled them off of the other van, or this one. Oh. Easy. It was just kind of stuck. I thought that was gonna be way more dramatic. So, this is a 14-bolt, full-floating rear end. And what that means is, to get to the goodies in here, we gotta pull the axle out. So you pull that off. There's a big axle nut in there, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see if we can get the drums off. Not very confident. If I can't, I'm willing to just run front brakes. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's you had a lot of water in it. Well, that's nothing to be concerned about at all. Aha. Lots of dirt, metal shavings, mud. That's exactly what you want to see. It needs that friction additive. They make a tool for this. I've never owned it. Bearing in here, which, oh wow. Hmm. I'll tell you, I didn't see that coming. Oh, these things are usually really bad. Kill all the brown recklesses in here. I mean, the cold probably got them, but we gotta make sure. We brought the brake lines off of the tan van. Well, this one, I guess. There's so many vans, it's hard to keep track that we should be able to reuse. And I have lots of new parts here from a Rock Auto, so those are probably wrong. Using brake tools is for chumps. A pair of locking pliers gets the job done. I, I leave all the springs hanging in their holes if I can, even though I've done it a hundred times. I still forget that <laughs> sometimes. So. Okay, now we will use the locking pliers. Get these cup springs off very gently. These are a nail and a cup. And again, your locking pliers are your best friend. Just use the locking pliers on this one as well. Replacement wheel cylinder looks pretty much the same. However, our replacement brake line doesn't really look much like it at all. So we're just gonna have to get a little, a little creative. In the way this goes in, partially due to this gigantic lifting block that's in there, uh, otherwise known as 
a piece of square tubing. So when you hang your brake shoes on, big on back, the big brake shoe goes on the back. Why? I don't know. It's the primary brake shoe. Uh, does it really make any difference? No, I don't think it does, but you'll get yelled at in the comments section if you don't do it. Getting that brake line tightened? Yep. Our brand new one. Let's very carefully inspect the bearings in this. Um, and uh, yeah, they're good. See that, Jay? Mm -hmm. I just ref uh, refurbished them, actually. They're like new again. There we go. Clean them with your gloves. Yeah, that's what gloves are for. Uh, I should probably run that adjuster out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Uh, come on, where are you at? Come on, I know you're in there. You have a fish for it. There it is. Cool. We'll go knock out the other side. Probably bleed the brakes tomorrow. Then let's try to drive it, Jay. Well, it's time to bleed some brakes. Uh, wheels and tires are a little delayed. We're gonna get them tomorrow, so this video is gonna be a little late. Uh, anyway, JD, you wanna run the pedal and I'll run the brakes? Yeah. All right, let's see what happens. Always start on the right rear when you're bleeding. Hopefully, uh, we tightened everything. Oh, we didn't. I can already see a brake line leaking. Oh. Well, that's good. We're gonna end up bleeding these things by smell because you can't see them there. Pump them up. Open it up, but I didn't get nothing. Tripod doesn't get tall enough to see in the van. Up periscope. My tripod is like seven feet tall. And now you can see JD. Holding. Behold, JD, I've discovered why. Why? There's no fluid in it. Oh, oops. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it every time. Hit the pedal a few times. I think I left it open. Nothing yet. Now what seems to have happened here is this prop valve is kicked over. You can see the little button on the end of it. It's pushed out right now. Hit the brakes, bud. No. Whoa. What was that? This camera got sprayed. Hit him again. Oh, we have a hole in a brake line. Oh! Oh! There's a pinhole in the brake line. Okay. I guess let's replace this. I want to make a new one. I got a piece of line here. Got my cool SUR and R something flare tool. It's probably my favorite flare tool ever. And we're just gonna rob the flare nuts off of the original line because they're kind of an oddball deal. I've got my line squared up in the die here. I'm gonna use the operation one, which makes the internal flare. Just squeeze till it doesn't want to go anymore. Looks pretty good. Sorry, that makes the external flare. Then you make the internal flare with operation two. Everything clips in, is magnetic on this thing. Not sponsored, by the way. I paid for this out of my own pocket, like most of this stuff. And I just ching, 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 ching. There you go, you can see the flare in there. And it's pretty much a perfect flare every single time. I have never had one fail. And uh, I've, I've used a lot of flare tools in my day. This is the easiest and fastest one I've ever had. There's a new brake line. Looks pretty good on there. So we can now bleed brakes, maybe. All right, we have fluid. Finally. It's a lot of line to fill, probably. All right, let me top it back off, bud, and then we'll keep on bleeding. Hold it. There. Oh, on there. Ah! It's like a geyser. Before we actually drive this thing, I think we probably ought to put an actual shifter in it with detents. So I got this B&M Unimatic. These are probably my favorite cable shifter because uh, they don't look like that stupid box thing on the floor. I hate those. Uh, we're gonna have to make a little mounting plate to mount it on, so we're gonna go do that over there. I want something kind of sturdy to mount this onto the floor with. I got this piece of stainless here. It'd be kind of cool. I don't know if I'll be able to cut it, but well, we'll damn sure try. But we're going to observe all safety practices while I try to cut through this with a death wheel with no guard. Oh yeah, I can cut that, no problem. Just going to do a little free handing. Well, I death wheeled John's engineering out of the way here. You want to pull that arm off the side of the trans, Jay? Yep. All right. You're putting the shift cable on, mm -hmm. or the lever on, and you're doing it for a GM, right? Yep. So you have bolts to the yeah. pan. So you got to put the arm on, and then the thing that bolts onto the pan. Okay. I have crafted this, so this bolts to this plate, which will sit over our oversized hole, 
and then we can just screw this whole plate down and it'll be removable. So we got a trim around the dog house here. We need this pretty much as far forward as we can get it. Here's our newly modified shifter plate. Seems to work. Shooting through the stainless might be kind of hard. Mm. Got to use that self tapper to start a pilot hole. Now I'm just going to shoot a self tapper. In. Now I'll just shoot a self tapper into it. Ah, yeah. Well, now I'll just shoot a self tapper into it. Yeah, you see, now I'll just shoot a self tapper into it. Okay. Has the self tapper been defeated? Tap a hole for that self tapper. Let's get that adjusted and uh, we should be a little safer to go driving tomorrow. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yep, we're living the high life now. Now we gotta complete this custom installation here by using self tappers. That boot's mm -hmm. gonna keep all the exhaust gases out now. See that, Jay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Install complete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that works really, really good. Uh, there's no interference. That won't get in the way of anything. Grab the brown doghouse. It's a little bit smaller. It might still make it over the big block. Handy thing about a van is all the parts are just right here. Hopefully, the shifter clears that. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Just like that. Easy. <laughs> so close. Yeah. There we go. Ah. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Nice. That ain't too bad, really. If it, these seats are too wide, if if it had the original seats, I think it would fit better. Behold. But we've all been waiting for the big reveal. I got these US wheel triangle hole Baja wheel things and Power King 7516s bias ply tires. Old school Z pattern. Uh, these are terrible. And these are overpriced. And over all in all, just really bad decision making on my part. But they look cool and that's all that matters. I have center caps and lug nuts courtesy of lug nut guys at lugnutguys.com get your new nuts lugnutguys.com <laughs> that's mean oh man yeah these are new lug nuts here I gotta finish the welds on the front end. There we go. Yeah, there we go. yeah it's done. You can't even see it, can you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I think our last step here is gonna be to put the, uh, I wanna put the round eye front end on it. And that's not so easy, actually. The whole front of this van is different than the older van. We have, of course, this thing, but this doesn't fit in there, I don't think. It looks basically completely different uh, than what's in there. So, I don't know how much good this does us necessarily. I kind of have a plan where I'll just cut this part out that holds the headlight in, and then we'll just cut this part out wherever the headlight needs to be, and then I'll just screw it on there and yeah, that'll work for sure. We also need to cut away like I did on this side, like that part. I need to cut this here and that's gonna let this radiator sit further this way uh, because it's, it's leaning in right now. So let me get the death wheel. I guess it's probably somewhere right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
That's better. Now we can lean this out more where it's supposed to be. I'm pretty sure we put this thing in first. No matter how many self-tapping screws it takes, I will get this installed. That's my commitment to you guys. A commitment of quality. Expertise. I think these need to go away. Those? Mm -hmm. Don't we need those? Nope. Okay. So it fits pretty good now. And that's pretty much what you want to see. So we're going to have to drill some new holes to mount this radiator with its little ear things here. Uh, it's not going to be ideal by any stretch. It'll keep it from falling into the engine, and that's a plus. Uh, we have to drill new holes because, of course, this is a big block radiator. It's much wider. Okay, guys, I'm about due for a set of drill bits. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but like 98% of this stuff comes out of my own pocket. Uh, if you could just check out polebarnmerch.com, see if you can get you a, a hat or a sweater or, you know, something like that. That's the stuff that really, really uh, helps me buy, you know, things like that. So I keep doing things like this. I got a chunk of money in this freaking van here. Uh, and uh, the only thing sponsored is the carburetor and the accessory drive. Pick you up a t-shirt or some stickers or something. It'd be much appreciated. We have new Holy Goat designs launching soon, or maybe they'll be out by the time you see this. I'm not sure. But check it out. PullBarMerch.com. This is in. The radiator is in. This bolt's here. We need it. Obviously, it doesn't fit. Uh, on the later model. Uh, we just got to figure out where we want it precisely right there, right? Mm -hmm. See that, JD? Yep, see, see what that. It's pre precision right mm -hmm. there. And I'm going to just get my body working tools out here and it'll 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 fit no problem. Really. Just like that. Yeah, uh, perfect. All right, well, I'll just go ahead and shoot a self tapper here. Beautiful self-conforming and then you just take this and see how it doesn't line up anymore at all JD uh -huh. do you notice that that's yep. all part of the plan mm -hmm. see when I tighten this down it's just gonna uh -huh. it's just gonna just like that yeah just like that Thank I you. mean really oh. beautiful oh just like that see that's perfect there we go <laughs> okay so this is all assembled now uh, radiators supported I even that on the trans cooler better. Now, it's kind of stuck up here. Sort of, kind of, where it goes. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a lot off. This part here is sticking out, and I knew I had to cut that off. I was just hoping to be able to eyeball a little bit. Go with the original plan of cutting off that and all those other protrusions. And then I'll probably just self tapper the whole thing onto the van, and we'll call it good. Just gotta get these spot welds off with my spot weld cutter. called brute force. <laughs> Man have hammer. Oh, oh. Smash. Come on. <laughs> what the hell, man? Don't make me get the air hammer around. I really didn't want to. That's Bondo. What? The whole... This is all made out of Bondo, but that's impossible because... Yeah, that looks like a repair from about 40 years ago. We all know you can't use body filler on the body of a car because that's definitely not what that's for. Oh, but wait, it looks fine and it's been there for decades. Strange, strange that. Hmm. <laughs> well, anyway. That ain't bad. I think it that. That'll suck into place. No doubt. I think I need to cut those headlight buckets. At least this one needs to come this way a little more. And this one as well. So I'm going to cut just like this far left side of this off. And then cut off the old part where it attached to the fender because that doesn't work in this van. We'll just kind of stick the whole thing up in there and see what it looks like. You know, just kind of eyeball it. Aha! Well, that doesn't fit. Kind of talking, but 
it's not exactly going to let me just, you know. I cut off the marker light entirely, and basically we'll just kind of shove him in there wherever he lands, you know, bolt him to whatever we can find. Now the headlight bucket, I got to cut out this kind of circle shape here. That's my best rendition of a circle. And this kind of fits up in there a lot easier. That. Once I cut that out, it'll let this kind of set back in there. Okay, we're close. Very close, actually. Now I can use the headlight bezel to position this. I mean, it don't gotta be perfect. Just gotta be it. Remove that. These will be the most permanently misadjusted headlights known to man. Shoot a self-tapper into it, right here. Shit. Self-tappers are also centering punches. And I can just see right where I need to put it, right there. Okay. Yes. That's really not too bad. I think that looks about right, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let me just continue shooting self-tappers into this until it's permanently mounted forever, until the end of time. See, the marker light is, well, completely different and doesn't even resemble uh, like where it's supposed to be. And so we'll fix that uh, with a self-tapper. Right there, probably. And <laughs> would you look at that? that look, just look at it. It's perfect. Would you just looky there? Just look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that. God, I'm I'm really good at hacking shit. All right, now we just copy all this to the other side and bolt the grill in, and we won't put a bumper on it, and we'll uh, end it there. No, we'll drive it first. I have never seen that. That's the inner part of the headlight, and that is a perfectly removed lens of a headlight. Like, these break when they come out, generally. Obviously, it's a sealed beam. It's supposed to look like that. That's crazy. I've never, never seen that. I mean, I, I know they're just kind of glued together, but these are in. Got the uh, semi-adjustable marker lights here. Just there. They flex where you need them. Very convenient. This one is. Wow, I put that in the wrong spot. Huh? There. <laughs> like a glove. Perfect. See how this bolt's going in sideways. Uh, that's normal. Yep. And that's now installed forever. You might notice how that hole doesn't really quite line up. And that's okay, because we'll just do this. And I will install these headlight bezels with self-tappers. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, there's a grill. <laughs> so we of course have to use the original Pathfinder hood from the Ludwig van because we have the old school front end on it now. No way in hell this fits, but we'll give it a shot. So just flip that hinge up there and start the bolts. And well, that's what these are for. <laughs> Oh boy. Well, it's shut now. What is that? I okay, got it readjusted. We got a prop rod now. Feeling pretty fancy. It's a little bit. It's okay. Yep. And we'll block this up, of course. That didn't shut that time. Oh, there it is. Now this side could go back, but it really can't because it's hitting the hinge. I mean, it's not the best, but at least it's got a hood. And it shuts. And Ludwig lives off. I don't think we need these anymore.
filled the transmission up. I pretty sure these hubs are engaged. They twisted, but this one is kind of, I don't know. It, it didn't feel very good to me. I had to use channel locks on them. I don't know. I'm just going to put it in four and let's see what happens. It'll probably blow up. Then it's not my problem anymore. Clockwise is disengaged, counterclockwise is engaged. Well, this one moves pretty freely. Didn't look like we had four wheel drive. I mean, I'd say that one's working though. I think this one's stripped, and unfortunately, you have an open differential. You got one hub that's stripped, it's going to send all the power to the side that isn't locked. And I'm going to guess that's what's going on here. Well, hop in, Jess. Come. <laughs> Come check out the comfort. Let's see what this thing's got. There. Don't mind that stuff. Don't mind this either. <laughs> and do we see pirates or? It's a very easy vehicle to drive. There's really nothing to it. Make sure you're parked so you don't drive through the wall. <laughs> Fuel pump, you know, that's easily accessible right there. Uh -huh. Nothing to it. Then you just fire the big block up. Keep the windows the, down. Huh? Keep the windows down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you'll suffocate. You'll die, actually. And then you just... Oh, it's here. There, there we go. Easy. All right, now we'll try to back up that really muddy hill right there. Well, anyway, it's not in four-wheel drive. I'm gonna guess the hubs are probably bad in the front. Uh, I think this left front hub is no good. Ugh. Let me crawl under there and mess with the shifter linkage just to be sure. Well, that would appear to be our coolant leak. Just the hose leaking a bit. Let me see if I can tighten that up. And uh, we don't need grass there anyway. I'm gonna have Jess look at the drive shaft as it's spinning. It looks like that shifter is hitting the side of the transmission. And I kind of pried it away from it, but I can't do a whole lot while it's sitting on this hill. But what we can do is put it in reverse and see if that front drive shaft is spinning. And if it is spinning, then we know it's a hub. If it's not spinning, then we know we need to mess with the transfer case. So that is spinning? Yeah. Okay, well that means it's a hub, which is, it's good. I'd rather work on those than the transfer case. Okay. However, I'm probably not doing that today. So let's just go get this thing stuck and we'll put hubs on it some other time. Heck yeah.
fair, it's hard to even walk over here. Proud of you. <laughs> so we really need that four wheel drive. God. It's not like it was raining for a month and then snowed for two weeks and now it's raining more. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> it's perfect terrain. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you backed up into a hill. <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. That is the saga of the 4x4 van, which was that van. <laughs> Hi, another buddy. van. And this van. We're not done with it, but I have other stuff to work on, so at least it's out of the shop. Uh, but no, we're not done with it at all. I'll order some pubs. You know, thank you guys for watching this whole ordeal. Uh, we'll be back and give it a month or two. I guess this will just be here for a while. Welcome to your new home. Right next to your sister. The storage shed. <laughs> I, I just remember we need to get the spare tire out of this and hang it off the back of that. It's like brand new. It's a Z pattern, you know, mud tire like what I put on. You're just storing it in the new storage shed. Yeah. yeah. It's intended purpose. Right there. Oh. Here's the shift pattern. All the way forward is four low. All the way back is four high. Okay. Well, that means we were driving around. We were driving around in four for sure, and you saw the uh, drive shaft turning. So. Yeah. But we should make sure we keep that. This is basically the same as a lug wrench. Giant pliers. TM. That reveals the uh, lack of spring shackle mount back here. Very nice. That's, that's custom. <laughs> Oh, well, we got one of these now. There we go. That was critical. Gotta have a matching spare. Here it is. There it is. See it? See it? It's done. You're welcome. It's been a year in the making. We'll see you guys next time on Pole Barn Garage.